In this video, we will practice graphing the tangent function with all different kinds of transformations um, like a change in amplitude and a phase shift. But first, let's do 60 seconds of background information. Let's just remember what the basic view of sine, cosine, and tangent look like. And in each case, this fourth mark represents one full period of the function. So each one of these marks is one fourth of the period. The standard sine function um, starts at the origin and then it goes up to its highest value, back to the midline, goes low, and back to the midline. So your basic sine function looks like this. Okay, on the other hand, the cosine function starts off at its highest value, falls to the midline, goes to its low value, back to the midline, and its highest value again. So your basic cosine function looks like this. Now, what does your basic cosine uh, function look like? Well, the cosine function starts at zero, similar to the way the sine function does. But before I do anything else, uh, the cosine function has a vertical asymptote right in the middle of its period. All right, so that's going to be a, a vertical dotted line. So when you're doing one period of the tangent function, um, tangent's always increasing. So from this, uh, from the origin here, it's going to go up as it approaches the asymptote and then it's going to pick up from below the asymptote. Oh, it's, it ends the period on the midline just like the sine function does. See how the sine begins and ends on the midline? The tangent function also begins and ends on the midline. Um, it just has this vertical asymptote in the middle. Uh, so it's going to start from low and approach the uh, the intercept here, the midline. All right, this is what one period of the tangent function looks like. So just like you've memorized what the sine function looks like, all right, one period separated into four jumps and the cosine function, you also need to memorize what the tangent function looks like. One period of the tangent function um, starts at the midline, ends at the midline, asymptote in the middle, and it, and it rises towards the asymptote and then it rises again back to the midline. Now the reason why I, I put this all the way over here to the right with all this space uh, going to the left is because um, when we, whenever we graph the tangent function we always graph two periods of it. Um, so instead of graphing just one period like I did for sine and cosine I want to show you what it looks like if we do a second period. So I'm going to put four marks to the left. One, two, three, four. And this is what we do when we graph a tangent function. Um, I'll switch colors, all right, so you can see that it's two periods of this function. Um, so if I go to the left four places, then that's another full period. Um, so this left period is going to begin and end right here. And uh, again, in the middle of that period, there should be a vertical asymptote. And again, the um, tangent is always increasing. Um, so it's going to rise towards the asymptote and then pick up from below and rise back to the midline. So this is what two periods of the tangent function look like. We always do one to the left and one to the right. All right, let's do problem number one. Y equals four tangent X. Uh, we definitely need the period, but um, see, this is the A value, uh, which we will use later. Uh, tangent function has no amplitude because it goes up and down forever, uh, but we will need it. The B value determines what the period is going to be. Uh, but the B value, see how there is no visible number? The B value is 1. So that means the tangent function is going to have its usual period, which is pi. So focus on that. Where sine and cosine uh, always had a natural period of 2 pi. 
uh, but the tangent function has a period of only pi, so don't get confused on that. I will do the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptote equations uh, at the end. But the phase shift, there is no phase shift because nothing's being added or subtracted here. If this was, uh, for example, 4 tangent and then we had x minus pi over 6, well then uh, the pi over 6 would be a phase shift to the right. But that didn't happen, so phase shift, none. All right, so what I like to do is I just start off with a number line and I just uh, put evenly spaced marks all along the way. Now the tangent function starts at zero when there's no phase shift. So I'm just gonna put zero somewhere near the middle of my graph. Okay, so this is going to be where tangent begins. And uh, every one of these marks is one fourth of the period. So if I go over four places, one, two, three, four, so this should be the end of the period right here. So this will be pi. So if I go, uh, of course, half of that, that should be pi over two. If I go half of that, that should be pi over four. And then uh, this should be three of these, so this will be three pi over four. All right, so over here, this would be one period of the tangent function. Um, the y-axis is always going to be at zero, so I'll go ahead and put the y-axis in now. All right, so there's our y-axis. That will help us because um, later when we deal with the a value, that will help us uh, know where to put the a value. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, since the a value is 4, I'm going to make sure that I put a mark at least at 4 and I'll put another one at negative 4. <laughs> I changed my mind about putting the 4 and negative 4 so high and so low. I'm Here I've made them a little bit closer because uh, that usually makes a graph look a little bit better. Anyway, so I will have one period of the tangent function over here to the right. Now, one feature of a tangent function is right in the middle of the period, there should be a vertical asymptote, which we will show as a dotted line. So I'm going to just draw myself a dotted line right in the middle of this period. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start graphing the tangent function. Um, the tangent function will begin and end the period on the midline and the tangent function is always uh, rising. So the tangent function should rise as it approaches the vertical asymptote. Now, at the halfway mark, like halfway between the midline and the asymptote, um, the graph should be at the A value. So that's where the A value comes in. So you can see if I made that A value really tall, it would be hard to draw the sketch properly. So um, don't put your A value too high. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph passing through that point, that A value point. And so that's what that side should look like. Now, it's going to pick up on the other side and come from down low and rise to the midline again. Um, but again, I'm going to use this A value. Halfway in between, the graph should be at the A value. So that should be right about there. So starting from down low, I should rise, pass through the A value as I approach the midline. Okay, so that is what one period of the tangent function looks like. Now, of course, uh, to the left should be the mirror image. Of course, the X values will just be the negative values that we had on the right. If I count four spaces to the left, one, two, three, four, so this is where the left period should begin, and it will end uh, right here at the y-axis. Again, right in the middle of this left period should be a vertical asymptote. Um, I'm going to try to cheat and just copy the asymptote that I already have.
Okay, so there should be a vertical asymptote right in the middle. The tangent function is always rising. So from the midline, I should be rising towards the asymptote. Don't forget to pause halfway and make sure that you have a point at the A value. So rising towards the asymptote like this. And then it picks up from down below, and again it will be rising towards the midline. But again, halfway it should be at that A value. So rising, passing through that A value, and there we are. So here is what uh, two periods of the tangent function will look like. All right, now we can go back and answer some of those other questions. Um, let's talk about the x-intercepts. All right, you see that the graph crosses the x-axis here and here and over here. Um, but looking at one period of the function, uh, the x-intercepts are at the beginning and end of the period. There are no x-intercepts within the period. Um, so that means the x-intercepts only occur um, at every period. So if you start at zero and you go one period forward, you hit another x-intercept. At you'll get to the next x-intercept if you go another period forward. For example, so one, two, three, four, there would be another x-intercept here, and of course that would be at two pi. And the next one would be at three pi, four pi, five pi. Um, so what you can do to write an expression for all the x-intercepts is um, just go ahead and mention the uh, one of the x-intercepts, like pi, Okay, and then say, all right, it'll be pi plus, and then mention the, uh, the period. So I'm going to say plus n pi, where n is going to represent an integer. Okay, so that would be like 1 pi plus 1 pi plus 2 pi plus 3 pi would give us the rest. It even give, gives us um, the, the uh, x-intercepts to the left, because if n is negative, then uh, you, begin, you begin to get the x-intercepts going to the left. OK. We can do the same thing with the vertical asymptotes. All right, pick one vertical asymptote. So we have one here at uh, pi over 2. Um, so a vertical asymptote has the equation x equals, so we have x equals pi over 2. Uh, but then we can say plus n pi. Again, all right, for the same reason. There's only one vertical asymptote per period. So you'd have to go a full period to get to the next vertical asymptote. Um, so that's why we're adding a full period. We're adding pi. We're adding multiples of pi, and that's what the n is about. And that's it for problem number one. All right, let's go ahead and do problem number two. Now, for this problem, the a value is one, all right, which we will actually use as we do the graph, but there's no amplitude for a tangent function. Keep that in mind. Uh, b value. The b value would be right there. It's invisible, so that means the b value is 1, which means that the period is just the usual period of the tangent function, which is pi. We will do the x-intercepts and vertical asymptote equations at the end. Um, this function does have a phase shift uh, because of the h value that's right here. Uh, the phase shift is going to be the opposite of what it looks like inside the parentheses here. So it will be a positive pi over 4 phase shift, uh, meaning that it will be to the right. OK, it'll be a positive pi over 4 to the right. Now, because there is a phase shift, the uh, tangent function is not going to start at 0. So like on the last function, I put 0 right in the middle and then I went uh, to the right and eventually to the left from there. But this time I'm not going to put 0 in the middle because uh, 
the tangent function is not going to start at 0. It's going to start at pi over 4. So that's what I'm going to put in the middle of my graph this time. So I am going to put pi over 4 right here in the middle. Okay. Now, if I go, um, so the tangent function should start there. Now, there is no vertical shift that I have to worry about. So that tells me that the tangent func that the, the x-axis here is the midline. So the tangent function will start at this phase shift. And uh, since each one of these marks represents one-fourth of the period, then I'm just going to count over four. So one, two, three, four. And this is where the tangent function will end. Now I need to label these marks in between. Um, since I'm not dealing with the usual period, uh, whenever there's a phase shift, what I like to do, do is just think of it like this. What is a quarter of the period? All right. In this case, the period was pi. So a quarter period will be pi over 4. So since each one of these marks is a quarter period, then I should be able to just add pi over 4 repeatedly. So if I do pi over 4 plus pi over 4, that's going to be 2 pi over 4. You know what? I'm going to have to reduce these later. I'm going to put it down here. So um, pi over 4 plus pi over 4 would be 2 pi over 4. And then if I add pi over 4 again, that would be 3 pi over 4. And if I add pi over 4 again, that would be 4 pi over 4. And then if I add one more time, that would be 5 pi over 4. Now I wrote this down here because some of these are going to reduce. And I didn't want them in my way. So 2 pi over 4 is the same thing as pi over 2. All right, 3 pi over 4 doesn't reduce. 4 pi over 4 is just pi. And then 5 pi over 4 does not reduce. OK, so these are the values that I would use for one period of the uh, tangent function. Now, um, eventually I'm going to need values going to the left because we always do two periods of the tangent function. So I'm going to count four spaces to the left as well. So one, two, three, four. OK, so the left period of the tangent function should begin right here. So I want to label all of these values as well. Um, I think I'll do this in a slightly different color. Well, first of all, OK, so I'm starting here at pi over 4. If I subtract pi over 4, then I'm going to have 0. Right? Pi over 4 minus pi over 4. Um, if I subtract pi over 4 again, I'm going to have negative pi over 4. OK, now I can see it's just the mirror image of these values. So next, I should have negative pi over 2. And then finally, I should have um, negative 3 pi over 4. OK, because it's just going down by pi over 4, going to the left. All right, so we have our x-axis labeled. Speaking of axes, um, now would be a good time to go ahead and put our y-axis in. Notice that our y-axis will not be um, at the starting point of the tangent function. The y-axis is always at 0. So I'm going to put my y-axis in at 0. OK, so there's my y-axis. OK, um, in the middle of each period, there's going to be a vertical asymptote. So I'm going to put a dotted line right here between um, the, the beginning and end of the period. All right, so there's my vertical asymptote right in the middle of the period. 
and then I did the same thing on the left. All right. Notice that I didn't put it halfway between uh, the first value and the y-axis. I'm ignoring the y-axis. I'm looking at these two blue dots, and uh, there this four spaces. So I, if you go over two spaces, then boom, that's where your vertical asymptote should be. Okay. Um, I think I will go ahead and mark my a value on the y-axis. All right, so my a value in this case was just one. See how there's no number there? So I'm gonna mark my a value. So I will have a positive one up there and I will have a negative one down here. That's gonna help me as I do the graph. Okay, so starting with the period on the right. Tangent function is always rising. So I'm going to start um, with this point that is on the midline and I'm going to rise approaching the vertical asymptote. Uh, now the a value right here in the middle between the midline and the asymptote it should be at the a value. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point right there and uh, that gives me an indication of the stretch of the graph. Okay, and now the uh, graph will pick up from below as I move to the other side of the vertical asymptote. But again, I'm going to use this A value. So halfway in between the asymptote and the midline, um, it should be at the A value, but um, below. So it should be right about here. All right, this one's not, you know what? I meant to do this in pink. So this is what one period of the function looks like. Now, uh, of course, on the left side, it'll be the mirror image of that. Um, well, I guess not the mirror image, but you get the point. I'm gonna start from here and do the same thing. So um, it should be rising. Oh yeah, let me make sure that it hits that A value. All right, so it should be rising as it approaches the asymptote. And then it picks up from down below. And uh, now here I get to put it uh, right on this y-axis at that negative one. So it should be hitting that a value on the negative side. And it's as it is rising toward the midline again. All right, so this is what two full periods of the tangent function will look like. Now let's go back and answer those other questions. X-intercepts, all right? Um, the X-intercepts only happen once every period, all right? It takes a full period before you get to another X-intercept. So just pick an X-intercept. I usually just pick the first positive X-intercept, which in this case is pi over four. So X-intercepts will be pi over four. And then they're gonna happen every period. So I'm going to put n, and then I'm going to put the period, all right? So I'm saying multiples. I'm adding multiples of the period. And uh, you should mention that n is an integer. Um, that way, it can be negative numbers will capture the x-intercepts that are to the left. OK, and we will do the same thing with the vertical asymptotes. Uh, I usually just pick the first positive vertical asymptote, which is 3 pi over 4, and I'll write that down. A vertical asymptote is always x equals, so x equals 3 pi over 4. And then um, vertical asymptotes only happen once per period, so I'm going to just add multiples of the period. So I'm going to add n pi again. And again, n is an integer, means positive or negative numbers, um, which gets me to the um, vertical asymptotes that are going to the left even. And that is it for problem number two. And I think I'll stop this video here, but there's more to come. Um, so I will see you on the next video for these two problems.